I'm going to read from Luke chapter 2. I don't have it up there for you, so just um, listen, and I want to just go through a few things. There's, there, every time I move into certain seasons, um, often the pressure is you have to speak certain things on certain days and certain calendars, and I've never been really good at that, but Christmas is one of those things that that it's, it's a lot of fun to stop and to ponder and to focus on because it's such a, it's such a pinnacle mo- moment in our history. I, I see there's several pinnacle moments in our history. One is, is the birth of Christ and the miracle that surrounded that. And the second one is also Easter time where that child grew up and became a sacrifice on our behalf. So those two moments of, of my perspective are our key pinnacles in our whole world and our society. In fact, without those two moments of Easter and Christmas, we would not be able to celebrate the way we do because what Jesus did was transform history. He transformed history. He restored something that was lost. And I want to emphasize the fact that he restored. He's not in the restoring business. He already restored it all. That's how powerful that sacrifice on the cross was. But we couldn't have the cross without the manger. And so I just want to draw a few thoughts out of Luke chapter 2 here. Um, I, I, again, as a pastor, you, you, we have certain scriptures you can read during the Christmas story. And, and if you've been a pastor for many, many years, you tend to overlap and things like that. But it was interesting this week as I was going through this passage of Luke chapter 2 again, and Of all places, I was in the gym last night, late last night, about 9, 9.30, and I was working out, and sometimes what I'll do is I'll have my phone, of course I'll be listening to music and and, and, um, things like that, but all of a sudden trains of thoughts started to come, so in between my workout sets, I was writing down some thoughts, and and I have three things that I want to share that I've never ever shared before in Luke chapter 2 that I found really interesting last night in last of all places I would have guessed to have an outline of a message, but here we go anyway. Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 8, it says, that night, as we heard before Sadie sharing, that night there were shepherds staying in the, in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And then verse 9 says, suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them, and they were terrified. I don't know about you, but the little that I know about shepherds is they kept to themselves very often. They were always alone. They didn't mix and mingle with the people around them, and they spent days and months with their sheep. I can't imagine what this day would have been like. A regular day, looking after their sheep. I mean, how exciting is that? Oh, there's 99, and there's still 99. Boring. You know, they, they, you don't have to feed them. You just take them around. They feed themselves. You make sure. There's just nothing to it. But this day was unique because something spectacular was about to happen. And it says here in verse 9, as I read, suddenly. In other words, it was an event that happened very quick. It wasn't long, dragged out. It was very quick. He says, suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared to them in radiance of God's glory and surrounded them, and they were terrified. I, I, I can imagine. And then it says in verse 10, but the angel of the Lord reassured them, don't be afraid. He said, I bring you, and here's what I want to talk about this morning, good news that will bring great joy to all people. He says, don't be afraid. This, this isn't a time to be afraid. This is a time, listen shepherds, this is a time to celebrate. Now I'm sure that they were speechless at this point. I would imagine so. Not a time to be afraid because something spectacular is about to take place. It doesn't stop there. It goes on and says, The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, in the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find the babe wrapped in snuggling in strips of cloth, lying in a feeding trough. Then verse 13. So it's not only just... The one angel coming and announcing, hey, I got something great to say. But then verse 11, it says, suddenly again, all of a sudden, it just happened that the angel was joined by a vast host of others. Now, that vast host explains that the sky was full of them. We're talking a vast host. They joined the vast host and others and the armies of heaven praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those whom God has pleased. That's as far as I want to read today because I think 
I think you can picture that in your mind and what that entails. This whole, not only did angels show up and kind of, you know, disrupt their system and say, hey, I got some great news to tell you. How many like their system disrupted? By your laughs, I can tell there's not too many and the other ones aren't being honest. (laughs) I don't like my system disrupted. I, in my mind, I have a system of how I do things, and when it's disrupted, it seems like it knocks everything else, and then everything falls after that. It seems that way. I don't like my system disrupted. But boy, the angel disrupted their system. Showed up and said, I got something to tell you that is so awesome and so great. And then before the words came out, the whole heavenly host filled the sky, thousands of angels, All of a sudden, they join in, and they celebrated, and they began to to praise God, saying, glory to God in the highest. This event is going to change the world. I would imagine, I'm just using my creativity a little bit. I would imagine that the moment before that happened, I, I don't know what it would have been like in heaven about the angels just going, can we go, can we go, can we go, can we go? They've been waiting for this moment too, generations after generations and decades after decades. They knew that one day... They were going to bring news that was going to change the dynamic of the world. And that moment, that moment the shepherds were taking care of their sheep and looking after, doing their own business, that moment changed everything, not only for them, but folks, it changed everything for us. Everything for us. Glory to God in the highest. Hmm, that's something we're celebrating, I think. There are three things that I just want to pull out of here with this announcement that they were going to, it was going to be good news that brings great joy to all people. I'm glad Jesus never excluded anyone. I'm glad there's no one excluded from this great transformation truth. Glory to the highest, the king has now come. There's three things that I want to pull through out of this passage of scripture. First of all, I want to ask you this question before I go on any further. When's the last time that you really heard some good news? When's the last time? Like I'm talking good news, news that you began to tell other people about. Maybe you had a mortgage paid off. That's worth, that's good news, isn't that? Making the last payment on your mortgage going, man, this is done. Or paid off a car, or Justin Trudeau resigns. That's good news, right? That's good news. That's worth celebrating right alone there. I'm, let's move on before I get myself into trouble. Maybe you pass a test, or, or, or maybe you won something spectacular. I know a few people in my life that have won a lot of money in the lottery by chance, and I've, I've witnessed that. I know what that excitement brings, but... I would say those are good news, but, but the reality is this, church. That type of good news is only short-lived. It's temporary. You pay off your mortgage. Woo! Then you buy a cottage. <laughs> and you're in debt again. You pay off your car. What's the next thing you do? You go to Estevan Motors and buy another one, right? Sorry. They're... <laughs> those things are short-lived. Because it seems like whatever we achieve, there's another level to achieve again. We pay off one credit card and we realize the other one now is full. And then we go shopping for other things. So a lot of these things that are usually good news are only temporary. But what I want to tell you, what's different about this good news that we hear in Luke chapter 2, it has nothing to do with things temporary. It involves earth but it also involves heaven. This good news is not only something that's going to fade away with time or with circumstances. This good news is unmovable, unshakable. It is there for our lifetime and yet to come. That's why I think the sky was full of these angels because this wasn't just simply any good news. This was a life-altering, life-changing, culture-shifting dynamic that was about to take place. Good news beyond simply the physical. And that brought a lasting, continued great joy. So three things that I just want to pull out of this little statement of great joy, good news and great joy for all people, and it's this. First of all, I want to emphasize that this good news that leads to great joy 
is meant to experience now. It's meant to experience now. For so long, I grew up in a religious circle that everything that was promised or talked about in the Bible was to experience when we get to heaven. I want to tell you this good news of great joy is for us to experience here and now. It has a future context, but it has a present reality. I'm so transformed by this present reality that I'm looking forward to the future. I'm not looking in the future through glasses that tell me that it's going to get better. I will overcome. I will. D- it's, it's looking through glasses that I have already overcome. The victory is mine. The joy is for me to experience here and now. The joy is something I can hang on to. And it changes my dynamics. It changes my perspective. It changes everything about how I do life. This joy affects how I look at my problems. This joy affects how I look at my struggles. This joy that that brought when Jesus Christ came, it puts my weaknesses in perspective. It puts my, my challenges in perspective. It puts my hopes into perspective. It's to experience here and now. I don't want to miss out, church. I don't want to miss out what God has for me to experience here. I often hear, oh, I can hardly wait to get to heaven, you know. All these problems are behind me. No, I want want heaven revealed here so I can put those problems under my feet and I can rise above them that they don't mold me. I mold them. (sighs) No wonder he said this is going to be great joy. Great. Out of this world greatness. Beyond anything that we can ever. It is meant to experience now. The second thing I want to highlight here briefly this morning is this. This joy is secure. How secure are your investments? How secure are they? I know the government guarantees GICs, right? They guarantee them. But what is their guarantee based on? As long as they have the say with finances. When those finance disappears, those GICs disappear along with it. What is our security? I've heard many testimonies over the years where economies have been hit hard and and, and people's life savings has just been gone because they've looked to that as secure. I want to tell you this great news of Jesus Christ coming to bring liberation to the world to include all people. This, This whole focus of Jesus bringing restoration to what was separate, what was taken apart because of choices of sin and choices that we made to separate us from God. He brings it all together by coming to earth just picture for a moment God in the flesh I can't fathom that that's why it is good news of great joy the word great in the, in the Greek language is the word megos where we get the English word mega from sometimes aren't we, don't, don't we over exaggerate things sometimes don't we you know you fishermen are really good at exaggerating Believe me, I've sat down, I have family that fish, and oh, that big one that got away, it was at least this long and that big, and I've never seen a fish that big in a lake in Saskatchewan, so you must have been dreaming, right? We're good at expressing words, and we want to capture what people, we want to create imagery where people are captured and, and really see what we see. But when God says, this news is off the charts, It is off the charts, folks. This is so life-changing, and it's secure. It doesn't shift with time. It doesn't shift with my performance. So much of our mindset is, I have to do this and do this and do this in order to get this, and it's not shifty. Come on, us here in Saskatchewan know what shifty is. I mean, we live with wind. We get out sometimes, and we can hardly get into our vehicles because the wind's blowing so hard. Sometimes we peek out at night to make sure our vehicle's still in the garage because the wind didn't take it away. There's a lot of shifty things. But I want to tell you this good news of great joy is secure. You wake up in the morning, it's there. You go through struggles and difficulties, it's there. You question your own life sometimes and things that are going on. It's still there. That good news is just as relevant, is just as sure right here and now. It's secure. You can't push it away. You can't remove it. It's there because he declared it over our lives. And when God declares something, that is secure. 
we can rest knowing that this good news can transform and change our life. That's the second thing that I wanted to say this morning is that it is secure. The third thing that I want to say is you can pass it on to others. I love it. It's not meant for you to keep for yourself. It's meant to pass on to other people. It's interesting. In this story, in Luke chapter 2, it goes on in verse 15. It says in verse 15 that the angels returned to heaven, and the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened. And so the Bible tells us they pack up their stuff, they leave their sheep. It's amazing how priorities change, isn't that? All of a sudden, their priority no longer was the sheep. we got to check out this mass of news that we just heard. And they left everything and they took off. In verse 16, they hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. There was the baby lying in the manger. And seeing them, the shepherds told everyone what had happened. They were the first ones to start passing the news. Listen, let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what I've seen. Let me tell you what we've experienced. I'm telling Jesus can be experienced in your life every day. They said, let's hurry to the village, and they found them, and there everything was said was there, and the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angels said to them about the child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, and then Mary kept all these things treasured in her heart, and then the shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying, praising God, for they had heard and seen, and it was all that the angel had told them. Isn't it fun giving people good news? I remember when the first time when we were, we expected our first child, it was like, Ooh, this is for real. And I remember enjoying and telling people, and then when the child's born and get, you know, gets around two years old, you don't want to talk about them anymore, do you? It's like, okay, let's just hurry to the, not teenage, past the teenage, adult stage. There we go, past all the struggle stage, right? Or maybe you had perfect kids. I have no idea, but we, we did except for three of them. Those of you who don't know, we've had three kids, so that explains a lot. But they'll say it's the parents. I'm guaranteed. They'll, they, if they had them, they would say it was the parents. The two people made it miserable, and that's the mom and dad. But they're not here to defend themselves. So we love giving those good news. Is that we love surprising people? Oh, oh, I guess they are here. Well, we'll talk later. How's that? We'll talk later. But I remember that, carrying that, telling people. I remember when I first put a ring on my wife's finger. Remember the first time I did that. I was like, okay, my world is about to get better. And I realized, whoops, that I speak too fast. You know, it took a little while. She had to get used to me, right? And I had to get used to her. It was more like she had to get used to me than me. No, let's not get there either. We're going to get myself in trouble. I couldn't wait to tell people. I remember I played hockey that night. And I went to the dress room, I had a different strut about how I walked. And I had a different way of talking. And, and I, I just felt different inside, because this, this woman in my life, I mean, woo, you know, I'm going to hang out with her a little more than I normally do. And I was carrying that. I remember going to the hospital, first time checking out my, do- my son that was born. Couldn't believe it. Wow. I'm a dad, I couldn't help but tell everybody, but I couldn't tell everybody. I got a son, I got a son, I got a son, I got whatever. I got a, and then I had a daughter, and then I had another son. It's like, okay, stop now. I don't want to buy a bus. No, but we, we can't wait to tell people things that are important to us, things that are mean most to us. We can't help but tell people that type of stuff. I want to tell you this news is so fantastic and so great when you experience, when you come to the understanding of what Jesus Christ has accomplished for us and what God's done. Oh, I tell you, it's stuff you can't help but let it out in how you live your life. I'm not saying sometimes you have to stand in a street corner and start yelling and screaming and telling people about what's, ex- what's exciting about your life. Sometimes it's out of just relationship, you being you and pouring out your life and serving people and, and giving people life. Sometimes it's as small as, as how, we, uh, how we talk to people how we value people. We have something inside that's not meant for us to keep. We can do the same thing that the angels did and begin to celebrate and glorify God and tell others about this great news and great joy that they too can experience. 
I don't know about you, but sometimes, sometimes you get so excited inside, you just don't know how to express it. I want to live with the reality of Jesus in my life every day. That doesn't mean I get religious. No way, thank you. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with relationship and the power of one-on relationship and the transformation that can happen in my life and yours just because of my relationship with Jesus. It changes everything. No wonder the angel said, glory to God in the highest and peace. Man, our world needs peace. And that doesn't mean absence of war. It means peace inside. Sometimes we live with such turmoil. We live with guilt. We live with shame. We live with things which we undo and redo. And but I want to tell you, when you experience the peace of God, those things are no longer issues in your life because you can't undo what was done. You can only go forward and change what's ahead of you. I want to encourage you, church. You have a lifetime experience to experience this good news, a lifetime to walk through this good news and allow it to continue to change your life every day, every day. Let me read it once more to you. That night there were shepherds in the fields, minding their own business, that's my translation, doing their regular routines, and suddenly their world changed. I want to say God loves bringing suddenlies in your life, not to shock you, but to give you perspective and to give you hope. He loves to show up in the areas of your life where you think, how can there be any hope? That's where he loves showing up, in those moments, those suddenlies in your life where you think everything is lost, there's a suddenly. When you think there's no hope, all of a sudden there's a suddenly because God is going to shift things in your life. And then the angel appeared among them and they were afraid, but they said, no, oh, don't be afraid. This is not a, my translation again, this is not a time to be scared. This is a time to celebrate because the news we're bringing you is so good it's going to bring great joy to all people. And then they said, Jesus, the Savior, is born this day in Bethlehem in the city of David. And you're going to recognize him by this sign. You're going to find him all wrapped up, snuggling in claws, lying in a manger. And then the nice part here. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of the heavens, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those whom God has pleased. I'm looking at a group of people that God is pleased with. He created you with a purpose, designed you with goals and passions for us to chase after. Don't look at your weaknesses as opportunities to hold you back, but rather look at them as opportunities to push you ahead. Don't let those things that you can't control hold you back. You made mistakes? Welcome to the club. <laughs> Welcome to the club. You're looking at one that makes mistakes all the time. But I want to tell you, you're also looking at someone that's been transformed by that good news and great joy. Amen? Amen. Let's pray.